Okay, we're here with a spray sealing video. We will be using the Krylon UV Resistant Clear acrylic coating. This is the gloss version. I guess it comes in a matte as well, which I need to purchase uh, sometime for my matte types of pieces, but we're just going with the uh, gloss right now. I'm going to spray um, four different foil pieces here, and um, it does give a little bit of a different look to certain types of foils, that the foils are very mirrored and smooth. It does, it can give it a, a little bit more of a frosted look, so we'll take a look and see what this does, if anything. I don't think you'll be able to see it on this video, but I was able to witness a little bit of a, a contrast change when you spray these pieces, especially if you use black ink. The black gets a little bit darker um, in terms of the saturation of it and value. The white, um, where it's been applied very in a very thin layer, it can change it slightly. I don't know if you can see on this one right here. This one, I don't know, there's not much of a clouded look. But sometimes when I go for these misty types of looks, like this type of... Uh, uh, let's see if I can get this to focus in here. The more delicate applications of white can uh, be affected. I just hit it with a really um, light spray, though, just to kind of generally seal it off. And I don't like to go much more than that, especially with when white pigment on darker surfaces um, has been used in the, uh, the process here. But everything else looks pretty good. Um, I've always worried about um, the white pigment inks becoming more kind of moving towards transparency and not being able to see them as much on here. But I, I feel they look pretty good, and I don't know, there's no problem with the, uh, the image... Um, the imagery and um, how it reads on there. Now one thing I was a little bit curious about is if that rainbowing type of effect would change on here by heat setting this area on the interior it becomes a little bit more of a rainbow and I think that did change it a little bit. It doesn't look quite as rainbowed anymore. Um, now if you're just stamping your imagery on certain types of foils it it's fine, but on other types of foils, what can happen is you can lose some of the, um, um, I don't know what you call the stain, the permanence of it. So you have to kind of, um, I don't know, play around with it a little bit in terms of um, how much you're applying on top of it. I don't know, that, that completely didn't make sense, but... Um, I don't know, just different foils take different types of applications of something like this. Uh, the ones that are a little bit more textured, like the Recollections brand, um, it just takes the sprays differently than the more mirror-like surface of this gold and silver foil. Um, that I, I don't know, I have a link to in the uh, description area, but it's just, it's so much thicker and much more um, glassy, mirror-like smooth. The Recollections ones have um, more of a texture to that, I don't think they're porous, but they are more porous than the much more mirrored ones, okay? So you have to kind of adjust everything. It's just, you know, it's not a huge adjustment, but, you know, you'll, I don't know. It just depends what you use on there, too. So you have to kind of play around with how much you spray your pieces with, okay? Okay, now this is one that um, I had to do some repair work on here because those very thin layers of white ink in those rays there, um, I just had some pieces stacked on here and they kind of scratched away at some of the, uh, the white so I had to go back in and do some repair work on it. This is an 8.5 by 11 piece, so really large. Um, this is the Recollections um, foil around the, the silver one. It's a non-Recollections um, silver, so um, you can just tell the, uh, not on this video here, but um, this foil on the perimeter is much more, it's almost crackled. So I, I, I just think the spray doesn't affect it as much because it's already inherently a little bit um, textured to begin with. So you can, you can tell the, uh, you can't really tell the difference where on the uh, silver part it gets a touch frosted. 
You know, which is one of those things. I, I mean, I might be able to spray this much thicker. Let me just try it, since this one's so small here. Okay, and I've given it a much thicker coating, so it's not just like tiny little dust beads of uh, acrylic um, sprayed onto it. It's thicker, so maybe that gives it much more of a glossy coating. I don't know. Eh, it looks even more frosted. I would stick with the uh, very light coating on there. I don't know, it's, it's interesting, though, because it changes a little bit of the spirit of the pieces, and it might be putting my pigment ink back into solution. So don't spray it like that. <laughs> Anyways, I just ruined a, a little two-and-a-half-inch square piece like that. It might look kind of interesting. It looks a little bit embossed, like... Uh, not embossed in terms of embossing powder, but it, they look a little bit raised now for some reason. Okay, so use um, good uh, spraying technique <laughs> like I was always doing until then, I guess. But we have to try these things. We're doing it in the name of uh, stamp science, we'll call it. Okay. All right, here's another piece of gold, and we have these areas right around in here in the fog, which are going to be prone to disappearing if we spray it too thickly, so we'll just go with the standard um, spray painting style techniques, which you go with these burst types of uh, movements like that, and you kind of move your hand as you're doing it, okay? So yeah, I just kind of give it a quick breeze over like that, or swipe over it like that. You retain your um, delicate areas, but it still gets the protective coating. All right. Okay, let's try some of these other pieces right here. Here's your blue. Um, well, I don't know if you can see my hidden um, imagery in there like that. See, there's the types of things. Isn't that fun right there? <laughs> Black pigment ink against really dark foil. Okay, and this is the same type of thing here. No hidden image in this one, but same color foil. Um, the jewel tone packed blue from uh, Recollections. You'll find it at Michael's. Okay. It's really the white areas that you have to kind of affix here. Okay, the black is just fine, you know. I don't know, I guess it could scratch off. But I don't know, um, the brilliant things. The black seems a little bit more fixed than the white to me for some reason. It's probably a little bit of a different chemistry, just as the uh, even the metallics are a little bit different in chemistry um, in terms of those inks, though. Okay. It's a real kind of damp day out, so when I spray these, I, I find that um, it's kind of, I feel it kind of a... Uh, the moisture in the air is kind of bending the, uh, the foil, but when it dries off, it should be fine. All right, let's see. I don't know if I was zoomed out from that last piece. Let's see if I can see. It's right here. This is... I'm trying to remember if this is foil or if it's... I don't even recall what paper this is on. This might be on dark blue um, glossy. made my darker areas much darker. I don't know, not, not like 30% dark or anything like that, but I saw a 10% change right up in here. Um, the Brilliance Black ink kind of dries to a uh, matte finish, so when you spray it, it looks more akin to how it looks when it's wet and freshly applied. Piece of silver. Uh, I already sprayed that one. Okay, here we go. Let's test out the um, the Emoki. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. The Emoki acrylic paint pens. Let's get this centered right here. Okay. I don't know how this will look, but we do have the Brilliance White laid down here. This one I don't feel I really need to spray, but I don't think I've sprayed those paint pens before, so let's take a look and see what it does. It 
certainly change the, uh, the paper that I have it mounted on, but um, the paper that I have it mounted on, as I watch the um, spray sealant, acrylic spray dry over here, it's returning it back to, you know, the true color of the paper. It might become a little bit darker, but ideally you spray the, uh, the pieces before you uh, mount them like that, but, you know, when I'm doing those videos, I just want to get along with it. But that one, actually, that looks pretty good. That spray sealant looks really great on there. Can you tell that, see that glossy shine on that? This was stamped, um, I don't know if it was on, maybe it was, maybe this was the one I did on glossy cardstock. Okay, but it looks pretty good. It looks, uh, that acrylic looks, uh, paint. Those little dots in there, look how beautiful that looks when it's spray sealed. It didn't make them run or anything like that. You know, that's water-based paint. And we have the retention of the, uh, the white kind of fogging on there. So that looks, that's a good combination there. We'll do some more of that. All right, this is a piece that I just did a little bit of repair work on, right in the point. The area around here, hopefully that showed on the video, but that became much darker. Okay. I think this is a colored pencil piece. Sometimes I can't even tell what media I used. This one was one where I used um, alcohol inks down in the waterfall area. And this is another one where it was, oh, that looks like real yellow there. In terms of the pigment ink used on that, I might have to go back in and add a little bit of white to that one. Okay. Let's see how it goes on this one first. A little bit more saturation on that one in terms of the deeper greens. I don't expect too much with the alcohol inks on this one because they're already kind of glossy. A little bit more saturation on this one um, being popping out. Um, not due to the, uh, the colored pencils on this one, which I used, but it's the dye-based inks on this one, especially up here. The dye-based ink impressions look so much more saturated that way, uh, you know, having been sprayed. But again, this one, not too much difference because they're already inherently kind of, uh, um, oh my gosh, alcohol inks. Look at this one right here. Okay, so this is alcohol inks. The alcohol inks plus this, too much of a saturation of it, it's making them run right in there. Because this, um, is putting the um, alcohol inks right back into solution, so I should have given it a much thinner coating just to seal it off, and then you can give it a, a, give it a thicker coating so that it um, doesn't put those back into solution. So, see how that's running like that? It's because I had it standing up like that. I can go back in with a white acrylic paint pen and just, you know, redefine those white waterfalls in there and hit it with some more of that white pigment ink, and that would solve that area right there. Now normally, if this was a sunny day or something like that, these would be drying much faster too. So you wouldn't have to worry about that quite so much, but hit it with a, a much thinner coat. And uh, you won't have to worry about that. Okay, so it's just something like that. That's a real, you know, light coating. And then just put it vertical, or horizontal. Like that. Um, this one, I didn't know if I needed to spray seal or not. But I think I do, because I, I rubbed it a little bit, and I saw a little bit of white residue on my fingers, so... Something like that. Okay. It really looks different in different light. That's what's so fun about the foils. This one right here is... It looks like just dye-based inks, and then some acrylic paint pen up there. Let's hit this side. I don't know if you can tell the difference between this side and this side. This side's a little bit more saturated and darker in value. I think it brought this area to life a little bit, especially in those trees. It made the uh, highlights stand out a little bit more by contrast. Okay. All right. All right. Another foil piece. Alright, a little bit more contrast on this one. 
this one's using the uh, rainbow holographic paper. It doesn't really show up too much because I've really muted it out, but there's a little bit of color in there. Now this one I, I didn't think I would spray seal, but um, I'm not spray sealing to protect this. It's not going to rub off because this is stamped on to a mat. No, I, I think it's stamped on star drain. Okay, so this is a fix. It's not going to rub off, but I thought I could get the saturation of the black uh, much darker with a spray seal, so let's see. Yeah, do you see that stroke right down there? It's a lot darker than over here. Now, I don't know what it's going to look like when it dries. It might dry lighter than what it looks right now when wet, but I think, in general, it will pop the contrast a little bit more, or a lot more. And in, in a scene like this one, I think just the blacker black, um, I don't know, it fits the, uh, the uh, it suits the, uh, whatever, the iconography and whatnot. The theme. All right. We have blue here. I really like this composition here with the, the columns. All right. That changed it a little bit. And the first piece here with the uh, hidden imagery right here. You have the, uh, the word stamp, but then you do that like that, and it's almost just the sky, you know. The, the quote in white tends to disappear when you get all that uh, reflected light coming off of it. It's a really overcast day, so you don't have a lot of reflected light here. But let's protect that pigment ink on a relatively non-porous surface, and you're all set. All right, so anyways, let's see. I'll show you what this looks like here. <laughs> There's all my pieces. So you gotta do this kind of on a, a day that's not very breezy, so you can set the pieces down. I mean, you might be doing one or two pieces though, so you won't have that kind of hassle of these things kind of floating away, but um, what I do is I saved a box here, and I just put all my pieces in there after I spray seal so that they don't uh, blow away. There's the smaller pieces like that, and yeah, yeah, you get a little bit of that rainbow effect. See, see that rainbow up there on that one? Right up there in that sky by the moon? So, spray sealing. I don't know. It takes away a little bit of it, but, you know, you still get some of that there. But you get your pieces protected. And, you know, so many of our pieces we give away in card making. You know, like we make some cards for ourselves, too, and whatnot, but... You know, stuff like that's going to get handled, and especially, these ones are made to be handled, too. They're kind of like little ornaments, you know, those little two and a half by two and an inch ones, you know, so spray sealing is definitely the way to go. If you're in a pinch, we used to do even things like hairspray. Um, probably not as great. Might kind of lead to a little bit of a coloring um, types of issues in the long run, but... Um, you know, I always say, hey, you know, I don't need my cards to last, you know, decades or something like that, you know, even, you know, even a few years. You want them to, yeah, but, um, you know, it's not a, really a big issue. But look at that holographic foil piece right here, look at that, that color right there, and then you go down here and it's a different color. You go over here, it looks like blue, so it's really a... See those foils like that, how they change, you know, in spirit, you know, depending on the angle and uh, reflected light that's shining in them. It's pretty fun. All right, so anyways, hope this uh, video comes in handy for you. Uh, certainly don't overspray your foils like I did on that one, but at least we know what that looks like. And also with the alcohol inks, oops, like on this one right here, you can really see it kind of bleeding into that area right in there, but all things can be um, salvaged and whatnot. This one really needs some extra um, foreground anyway, so now yeah, we can see about that. Okay, so anyways, if you have any questions, drop me a note in the comments section. Thanks for watching.